Well, welcome everyone. I'm John Warnin. I'm the Director of Admissions and Tuition Assistance here at Columbus Academy. Uh, I've got with me John Exline, who is the Tuition Assistance Coordinator. And uh, we're here this morning to chat with you. A little housekeeping before we get started with our, our topic, uh, Tuition Assistance at Columbus Academy. Um, Right around the corner, uh, today is January 22nd, and uh, it's about a month from now that the admissions committees will be meeting uh, to look at first round candidates. So if you are interested in considering Columbus Academy for your child, uh, if you're already in the process, in the pipeline, that's super, and uh, we're going to go ahead and keep, keep uh, you on track and make sure that all the deadlines are, are met. If you are new to Columbus Academy and just now getting started, you will wanna uh, move quickly through the uh, admissions process. Uh, first round admissions decisions will be uh, made at the end of February and announced March 1st. So uh, if you have not yet uh, come taking a tour, make sure that you're, you're doing that. We have, um, uh, a couple more Zooms at noon, two more scheduled for this year. A week from today, we, we talk with, uh, with uh, Melissa Clark Beckett and Gabby May. Melissa Clark Beckett is our uh, Director of Parent Relations. Uh, and then uh, Gabby May is uh, one of the presidents of, co-presidents of uh, PACA, our Parents Association, and talking about parent engagement here at Columbus Academy. Um, a week from after that on uh, Monday, February 5th, uh, we're gonna be talking about diversity and inclusion here at Columbus Academy. We'll be speaking with uh, Dr. Pascal Lasambe and Davida Arnold, who are both in our, uh, both work in the diversity and community life office. So uh, you wanna see, see us on those two dates. Um, but again, if you have not yet uh, come and taken a, a tour, please reach out right away because uh, because the the deadline is approaching. So, uh, so today's topic a very timely one: uh, tuition assistance here at Columbus Academy. Um, I have with me John Exline, as I mentioned, uh, longest serving faculty member here at Columbus Academy. Uh, this is what year 20, John? 2021? 20, 56. 56. <laughs> I had Mr. Exline back in grade eight for uh, US history many, many years ago. Um, in addition to his teaching and coaching responsibilities here, he is the uh, tuition assistance coordinator. So thanks for, thanks for joining us today. Um, as usual, behind the scenes is Dr. Anika Latell. Uh, she is our uh, admissions data analyst and uh, does lots of techie things for us. So uh, right now she is behind the scenes uh, curating any questions. Uh, the, the, this session will go about uh, half an hour. So as you, as you have questions, as questions arise, please do put them in the chat and Anika will be curating that. In addition, Anika is going to, to put in the chat uh, a couple of links, uh, a link to um, our tuition assistance policies and procedures handout. Um, so that, that, that is a, uh, a crucial piece of information that people need, uh, has some crunchy details perhaps, but also um, talks a little bit about the philosophy and ins and outs of tuition assistance here at Academy. So you'll want to take a look at that. And again, those links should be in the chat. Um, so without further ado, we're going to jump in. Uh, Anika, I, I have that uh, presentation, the, the slideshow for you. I'm going to zip through those slides quickly uh, if I could. Um, so uh, Columbus Academy has been around since 1911, um, and we went ahead and uh, I think, uh, the, the, as far as I know, the first students to, to receive tuition assistance were actually uh, in the late 20s, early 30s, I believe. Um, but at that time, it was, a, it was quite a small program. Um, the whole idea of our tuition assistance, uh, the, the whole philosophy is to make Columbus Academy as affordable for as many families across central Ohio as possible. Um, and so uh, that 
Sounds, sounds lofty and, and easy. Uh, of course, there are crunchy details. Families have to apply through Clarity, um, and uh, it's a software company. Uh, and But I do want to give uh, a little bit of context um, for our for tuition assistance here. Um, pe some people look at our, our tuition and say, oh my gosh, that's just so, so high. Um, and I understand perhaps why they, they may knee-jerkly knee -jerkly, uh, think that. However, um, I think it's very important for, for folks to, to realize, oops, did that say academy? At, um, academy's uh, cost per student. Um, that, for some reason, that didn't quite appear the way it's supposed to. Um, the the, uh, the cost per student, I, I looked up uh, in US News and World Report that the amount of money spent per student by several districts in central Ohio, Dublin, uh, Gahanna, Granville, et cetera. And they were all in the, uh, uh, most were in the eighteen to $19,000 per child range. Columbus Academy, I'm sorry, this, uh, we actually spend $37,000 per student here at Columbus Academy. Um, and I think, uh, unfortunately, that's the, the graph is incorrect. I'm sorry about that. Um, but uh, so we're spending, uh, in most cases, about twice as much. And that sounds, wow, we must be, we be incredibly excessive. But if you go to the next slide, here, here's the real key piece of the story. Um, the student-teacher ratio. And Columbus Academy's student-teacher ratio is about eight to one. And in the other districts around Central Ohio, and again, I looked, uh, these, this data, what came from Niche and from uh, some U.S. News and World Report, um, the average uh, student teacher ratio in Ohio is about 18. Um, and all of these districts are, all the central Ohio districts are right there. And so the, the reason that Columbus Academy appears to be so expensive, if you will, is our faculty, uh, that's the number one cost center. Uh, and what we end up uh, doing is, again, we have about twice as many uh, teachers per student as the, the local public schools. Um, I think that's important for families to know uh, and, and realize. In addition, if you go to the next slide, we do have unmatched facilities here. 231 acres, um, two turf fields, swimming, uh, multiple gymnasiums, a field house, labs, art centers, maker spaces. Um, we are a very, very well-resourced school. And, and so frankly, that is an expensive proposition. And um, so I hope that that helps set some of the, some of the framework. Um, next slide, Anika. Um, uh, Columbus Academy, uh, we are routinely increasing our tuition assistant budget. Um, we have been going uh, this year, we have uh, just over $4.1 million that we grant in tuition assistance. These are grants that are made. There is no, uh, it's not a loan or there's no expectation of, of repayment, um, but um, routinely uh, that we think that we are the uh, giving out the most money uh, to need-based tuition assistance in central Ohio. So uh, this actually was not updated uh, in, in uh, full disclosure. This was, this we have not updated this. Uh, we are in the process of working on tuition assistance grants for the coming year. Um, but this may, this uh, slide may, may give you a, some indication of how many families at different income bands receive tuition assistance. Um, many people are surprised that Families earning over $200,000 are qualifying for and receiving need-based aid. Um, we'll talk in just a couple of minutes about how the, how, this, how the process works, but just wanted to zip through and give out some, some, some facts first. Um, again, uh, you notice that many families have one child who are receiving tuition assistance. 
uh, but it's a quick, quick little bar graph of the number of families at different with different numbers of children uh, receiving. So uh, just to help you. And then um, not surprisingly, uh, the average tuition assistance grant by division is, is given here, lower school, middle school, and upper school. Um, in lower school, typically, uh, as uh, we, we uh, typically we cap grants at about 50% of tuition. Um, that can't be said without some sort of explanation. So I'm, I'm gonna give a brief chat about why that is uh, for those of you watching who have lower schoolers. Um, Columbus Academy, uh, we have, have uh, about 300 students who receive tuition assistance, about a quarter of our students. Um, the, when, when the school commits to a family, when, when we make a tuition assistance grant, the assumption is that that grant is going to continue uh, at, that, at that funding level um, until this child graduates. Um, and so if a, if a student, we give tuition assistance as, as, as young as pre-K, and so that's, that's a 14-year commitment for the school. Um, we are committing to the family. Um, families have to apply every year, of course, um, but the assumption is we are going to continue funding that student. Uh, and so we're making a long-term commitment. On the other hand, if a student comes in ninth grade, we have an easier time uh, meeting that need because those, re those tuition assistance dollars are gonna come back into the school four years later, just they only have ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. And so we're able to, to recycle those dollars. So at the, at the high school level, we're make, at the upper school level, we're meeting uh, much more uh, of a, a higher percentage of demonstrated need. So uh, happy to answer more questions about that. Uh, and just a couple quick items uh, you see here, uh, it's not a loan. Uh, we have families who receive only $1,000, and then we have families that are receiving a significant portion of tuition. Everyone will need to pay something here at Columbus Academy. Um, we rarely have a, a full need situation, a full grant situation. Uh, and then uh, we do, as we are making our grants, we do consider the cost of, of attendance, that, which means, for example, uh, there's an eighth grade uh, trip to Washington, D.C. Um, while the tuition is X, when we get together and discuss the cost of attendance, we actually include, for an eighth grader, it's X plus the cost of that trip. So we, we are making... Uh, we are trying to take into account the cost of being here at the school, not just our tuition. Um, the last item I should mention there is that uh, tuition does include a $1,250 uh, lunch fee. Uh, so, all right. Um, finally, the business office is very good about trying to work with families to so that we can, they can tailor uh, the the billing to a family's needs. Um, there's a, a number of different plans, including um, a nine month payment plan, a 10 month payment plan, and a 12 month payment plan. Finally, uh, we do offer tuition ins insurance. It's uh, families need to pay about 1.9% uh, of their net tuition <laughs> in order to, to purchase the optional tuition assistance. Um, and then finally, if you have questions for us, you can you can always reach out. Very easy, financial aid at columbusacademy.org. So um, with that background, uh, John and I now are going to delve into some some work on the, uh, you know, help, help people out. Um, John, the process, uh, why don't you do yeah, a little bit about that. <clears throat> the process uh, involves, uh, as John said, earlier, Clarity, which is a company which uh, for many schools throughout the United States, independent schools, um, does a compilation of information 
and then with uh, a variety of algorithms, determines based upon uh, income tax returns you know, from previous years, and then um, much like you would have with FAFSA or something like that, uh, a variety of information they ask for, they come up with a suggested tuition, uh, which is sort of a starting place for us. Um, so when parents fill out the Clarity information, Clarity comes up with suggested tuition, and then also there is a place where parents, uh, the parent uh, puts down an amount that they feel they could afford. And we look at the difference between those two, uh, and then we go through the information that we have in conjunction with the levels of tuition and also the amount of our tuition or financial aid budget or tuition assistant budget for the year, and then go through decision making about where, um, where we're able to put that money uh, to best help the families that are in need of help. It is a need-based tuition situation. It is not, you know, athletic scholarships or anything like that. It's need-based tuition. And <clears throat> when we make these decisions, uh, if parents feel that they have uh, the, the amount that we have uh, set aside or set for their tuition assistance is not sufficient, there is an opportunity to appeal. So basically in December is when... Um, returning families will make their, their, fill out their information for clarity, all right? Then we make decisions in early January, and those decisions go out to returning families in late January uh, as to what their uh, tuition is going to be. In other words, the basic tuition minus tuition assistance. Uh, then there's an opportunity for appeals for new students. Uh, that um, the decision, as John said, comes out in March. The Deadline for financial aid is in early February. Yes. And then um, once the decision comes out uh, at about the same time, approximately the same time, maybe a day or two later, then the financial uh, assistance or tuition assistance amount comes through as well. But new students have the same process. They go through filling out the information for clarity, um, stating an amount that they feel they can afford, and then we work with that. Uh, and it is... So it's part science and part art. Uh, yes. The science part is uh, basically what Clarity does. The art part is what we do, trying to take the information that the parents give us, you know, family size, uh, other situations that might impact their ability to pay. And then we try to, as I said, come up with the fairest distribution of what is, as John said, an increasing budget, but still a limited budget Well, uh, and for the, for the families. And and following up on that, it, it's important that families realize um, Columbus Academy, again, we have a, a, a significant but a fixed budget for tuition assistance. And every year we end up uh, allocating the full budget. Um, this year, uh, for this year, it was 4.1 million. The demonstrated need in our community um, is probably well over four and a half million. Um, we are meeting typically overall school-wide about 85% of demonstrated need. In, in this business, it's called gapping families. Uh, colleges do this too, sadly. Um, and we know that we are not meeting full need. We recognize this. Um, if a family needs $10,000, if, if their calculation is $10,000, we may only be able to grant that family $8,500. We recognize that. We know that we are gapping families. What, unfortunately, our budget is is just not it. The need in our community is greater than our budget. So what that means is we have, we are asking all families, and we recognize this. It's important that you you understand this as as families applying for tuition assistance. We want all families to stretch. Um, Columbus Academy, as I mentioned before, we we are doing really great things here. But it is uh, not an inexpensive proposition. And so we want families to stretch in order to make it. We don't want any families to break, but we, we need all families to stretch. And in that policies and procedures uh, sheet, you'll, you'll see there, there are limits to what, what the financial aid committee, what the tuition assistance committee is going to be able to do. Um, but we look at if, if a family has ex extensive vacations, if they have 
luxury cars, if they if they have a country club membership, th these are these are all fine things. They're, but they are family choices that are being made, and Columbus Academy can't be the one, un unfortunately, that ends up uh, putting those bills. So, uh, not to not to hit that too hard, but but I think it is important that, that families realize we 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 think it's a great school. We both John and I attended, interestingly enough. Um, and uh, but but we we do need pe people to know uh, that we end up needing to gap families. No, actually, both John and I attended school with some financial assistance. Absol absolutely, financial assistance. Uh, In interestingly enough, we were, we both our both our families received tuition assistance. So, and I think you have to the the idea of stretching is in part the result that uh, we feel that um, you're stretching for. Uh, a better process of education, better system of education, more opportunities within the school, and uh, you know those things are funded, uh, and you're getting the advantage of that. And, and also, we try where possible not to, you know, kind of nickel and dime you with uh, additional amounts for this, that, and the other thing. So, <clears throat> pretty much, yeah. For example, there's no pay to play. In, in, right. in, I mean, lots of districts say, oh, if you're going out for a sports team, you know, the first one costs four hundred dollars right. or whatever it may be. Right. So, yeah, and the, the process, as I said, it's we, we do have you do have the opportunity to appeal uh, if you feel that uh, you know you just can't make the stretch given what the tuition assistance uh, um, is, and if you know we have monies available, uh, although as John said, we usually use one hundred percent of the budget, uh, then we can uh, sometimes make make adjustments. But that's why it's important when you first fill out that information that you include all information that impacts your ability to pay because that's the basis on which we make the decisions for tuition assistance yes. your ability to pay right um john talk a little bit about uh and i can I, I'll, I'll jump in as well confidentiality and uh you know kind of these are sensitive right. topics obviously when when we're talking about finances when we're talking about uh you know such things these are these are delicate well the clarity process uh is um tremendously secure. Uh, they have gone through that, showing us what their process is. So that information is really only available to John, myself, uh, and the head of school, and business also office. the business office, the people who are responsible for sending out the bills. Uh, teachers in classes do not know which kids are on financial aid or have tuition assistance and which ones don't. So there's no uh, it's a situation where students will feel that, you know, um, they're being dealt with differently because of their financial aid situation, uh, because that information is not available to, to faculty members. Um, interestingly, I get uh, just a, a personal story. Before moving into the admissions office, I was the dean of students in the high school for about a dozen years. Um, in that role, I was, I was talking with families about very sensitive topics. Um, and you can imagine perhaps that uh, perhaps knowing a family's financial situation might have given me some insights and, and ability to 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 address that. Um, I, I did not know as the dean of students in the high school. I did. I was not uh, given access to which students are on tuition receive tuition assistance and which don't. Um, it's very very important that families realize that level of confidentiality exists here at Columbus Academy. It's so important to us, incidentally, that when you when a family accepts a tuition assistance grant, part of the little the the contract that you sign says, I understand that confidentiality is important and Columbus Academy will will not be discussing this grant. I too agree that I will not be discussing the grant and uh it's grounds for retraction, unfortunately, if uh, if that ends up not being not being uh, abided by. Right. So, um, but but again, we take that confidentiality piece very very seriously. Um, John, um, talking, thinking a little bit about uh, the evolution of tuition assistance. Um, these these families are applying here in 2024 and don't don't know what it, it used to be like but um but it, initially when when schools like Columbus Academy started began offering tuition assistance it was about what we call access 
Um, and now the pendulum has shifted to affordability. Right. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it, I mean, and it's the affordability issue is one where uh, obviously tuition increases on a year to year basis. Um, and oftentimes we try to keep it somewhat level with uh, what cost of living increases are. But at the same time, uh, usually it's an issue where a family might have a situation where their income doesn't increase as much as um, their the tuition at the school does. And in those situations, we look into where uh, what is affordable for a family, as John said, also with that uh, hope that they can stretch a little bit. But the idea of affordability is that we want to make sure that there also is the opportunity to create increasing diversity, different uh, individuals at the school who provide them uh, a much greater breadth of uh, student identity here in school so that students are not, you know, dealing simply with a country club clientele. And I think uh, our ability to uh, increase that affordability, uh, for one thing, students with the, or families that have the least amount of ability to afford tend to get a much larger percentage. So for example, someone who um, uh, has an ability to only give a very small percentage of their of the tuition will get a much larger percentage of of the gap um, in their grant, whereas people that are able to spend a much larger percentage of the tuition will get a slightly smaller percentage of the need. Uh, once again, the idea that affordability is you know the driving force between much of the decisions that we make, uh, trying to determine which families do have the ability perhaps to stretch a little bit and which families simply um, are maxing out their um, their ability to pay. Um, along those same lines, I, um, I, I talked earlier about uh, tuition or the fact that Columbus Academy is, is committing to families. One of the things that, that I, I should point out is that uh, pretend a family today uh, has a $10,000 grant for tuition, a net tuition of tuition minus 10,000. It's actually that net tuition that number that, that's that's the important part. Um, John mentions tuition increases. Each year our tuition uh, is going to go up typically three and a half ish percent. Um, and so if a family, if we give ten thousand uh, dollars, let, let's actually say it the other way. If a family's net tuition is ten thousand dollars, the assumption is that that net tuition will stay roughly at ten thousand dollars. And Columbus Academy will end up offering more tuition assistance. So it's not like we're going to, in year one, we're going to ask you for $10,000. And then we're just going to get you in the door. And next year, oh, it's 11. And then it's 12. And it, that's not the way it works. Families apply each year for tuition assistance. And again, assuming, assuming no substantive change uh, in, in a family's circumstances, they should expect, again, assuming that we have the resources to, to make this happen, they should expect that that net tuition number would be relatively constant. Um, I hope that makes sense to people, but it's, um, it's not like we're, you know, as a, as a first grader, you're going to pay 10,000. And by the time you're, uh, 12 years later in senior year, you're paying 22, we're up at a thousand dollars each year and just trying to nickel and dime families. That's not how we do it. That makes sense. Right. Okay. Sorry. Um, Anika, we, we should see. Are there any questions in the in the uh, chat? Not yet. Okay. Feel free to, to add those. Um, so, uh, um, John, this year, right now, this Zoom uh, at noon is, is targeting our inquiring, our applying, our newly applying families. What's the process look like? Uh, in year, instead of year zero, in year one, two, and so forth, after a family is is already here? Well, once again, as I said before, that the uh, returning students, uh, they have to uh, make application. And the purpose of that is to make sure, first of all, is there still a need? Uh, secondly, we need to, we want to make sure that we have sufficient resources for those returning students <clears throat> so that we take care of those tuition assistant grants First, that way we know how much we have left over for new students. Um, 
But the idea, once again, is to make, once you're here, is to make certain that you're able to continue to afford on a year-to-year -year basis. So basically, we move the timeline back a little bit. Uh, this way, we can see if there's a significant change in income or assets that affect an ability to pay, whether it's an ability to pay more or an ability to pay less. Uh, but we do review that every year. Um, and that uh, need, you know, that uh, ability to pay continues to be the driving force between the before the as far as the determination as to how much tuition assistance will be given. Yeah. Um, John, what happens uh, during the year if a family situation suddenly changes? How, how does that how's that happen? Well, in those situations, and those do occur on uh, the school will attempt either to uh, hold off on collecting additional funds if a family doesn't have available. If it's a short-term situation, uh, we can work around that. If it's a long-term situation, sometimes we will ask for, uh, in effect, what becomes an appeal for additional funds, and we'll do whatever we can within the boundaries of our budget uh, to try and, and uh, take care of those situations. Sure. Once again, this is why it's important to make sure in your initial application each year uh, to put in information about any possible problems that might you might see so that we at least have some idea as to what might be down the road. But we do try wherever possible, once the school year has begun, to keep the student in the school. Um, the idea of, because of a lack of uh, the ability to pay, uh, because of uh, circumstances beyond control of family, um, you know, the student has to leave the school uh, we try as much as possible to ever avoid that, that Absolutely. situation. Absolutely. And the business office. We have one question, John. Please. Sorry. Um, they asked when an applicant has divorced and remarried parents, how does having essentially two sets of parents affect the calculation? Thank you very much for asking. That's a, that's, that's not an uncommon question. I really appreciate that. Um, well, both, both households, are going to need if you, if a family if a student has multiple households, uh, both households are going to need to apply for tuition assistance. Um, the the if if one fit one of the parents has not had contact for seven years or greater, uh, that that can be document that needs to be documented um, sent to uh, to me as the director or the director of tuition assistance. And in that case, we will waive the requirement for the second parent. However, um, because Columbus Academy uh, has finite resources in terms of tuition assistance, um, the resources of both households will be considered uh, for the grant, any grant that we are, are giving. Um, but we, also, we also take into consideration the fact that you're supporting two different Absolutely. households too. So right. in effect, the uh, expected contribution based upon the total income of the two is reduced somewhat because of the fact that two, two different households are being supported as well. Yes. Um, but if, if you have any, it, th these, are also, these are often very nuanced situations. So I, so I do encourage uh, whoever asked that question, if there's any sort of special circumstance mm -hmm. that they, they're wondering about, that they contact, uh, again, the best thing to do is email financial aid at columbusacademy.org. Um, and we will be able to, to do that. Um, I do wanna talk a little bit about, um, I think it's important for families to understand how tuition assistance is funded here at Columbus Academy. Um, th that is a, a very crucial piece to understanding the whole process. Um, we have a, a couple of different funding sources. One is donations. Uh, we, ha we have an annual fund. Uh, so each year, the development office raises about $1.6, $1.7 million. Um, and that is, uh, people can give to any number of different areas of the school, but it is often, uh, often tuition assistance is, is named there. We have uh, about a... a $35 million endowment. I think it's about $35 million. Um, and so the, the, the proceeds, the, the interest, uh, about a 5% draw, uh, will, will come back to the school. That money is often earmarked for tuition assistance. Finally, 
if, if you were if you were adding numbers up in your head and you get about 1.6 from the annual fund and about 1.6 from uh, the the spinoff 1.5 from the um, you know, from the endowment that actually we are still granting money beyond that and so it's important that families realize full pay families are actually subsidizing the the cost of education um, and I think that that's a very important piece to for for the the receiving families to understand um, so um, last item I want to talk about and then uh, again any other questions uh, merit scholarships uh, and we have we have two uh, need-based scholarships that are that are worth mentioning going into the high school um, there's one called the alumni scholar uh, an alumni scholarship and another called the Malone. These are, are special named scholarships that end up, again, both are need-based, um, but they actually, uh, by deed, by, uh, by their granting authority, these, in these cases, the recipients of these two funds uh, actually are guaranteed 100% of their need. So whatever no, number clarity kicks out, uh, that is the amount uh, that they will pay. Everything else will be covered um, by the school. And finally, going into the high school, we have a small number of merit scholarships. Um, it's actually, the number isn't the important piece. Uh, we actually have a small budget uh, and that is there for new rising ninth graders who are new to Columbus Academy, we are able to uh, to about s between six and eight students um, where we are allowed to go up that that the merit scholarship committee is allowed to grant up to half tuition uh, for an incoming uh, student or two. Um, typically those that is not granted as a full uh, half tuition. Uh, much more typically, uh, there are about six or eight recipients uh, who are who are selected during the process, the admissions process, and those uh, the money that is allocated for the merit scholarship is directed um, to those six or eight. Um, so the average grant is some is typically in the uh, four to six thousand dollar range. But often we get questions about the merit scholarship. And the, and the merit scholarships are. They are for the four, full four years. Thank it's you. It's not just a one-year situation. It's a full four years. And in a very few cases, the merit can be added to a need-based yes. uh, aid, too. Thank you. So we have those situations also. Yep. So um, anything else that we should add, John? No, I think we covered pretty well. Uh, if there's any other questions. Anika, are there any questions that, that remain? No. Okay. Well, we've come to the end of another Zoom at noon. Uh, we hope that you'll join us next Monday when we talk about parent involvement here at Columbus Academy. And then February 5th, uh, our final scheduled Zoom at noon, uh, talking about diversity and inclusion work here at, at uh, Columbus Academy. So, Mr. Exline, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and we'll see you next time on Columbus Academy's Zoom at noon. Thank, thank you very you. much.